And it's 44 minutes after on this Friday afternoon. Is art imitating life, or at uh, the very least, is the art world going through its own stress test as the wealthiest of the wealthy get hit by the financial crisis? Here with us uh, now is Christie's America's president, Mark Potter. Mark, good Hello. to have you with us. Porter. Good Hi. afternoon. Forgive me. Um, let me ask you, because it's been such a tough environment for everybody. You and I were just talking in the break. I mean, are people still buying? I mean, they are, right? Well, people are buying uh, at a considerably increased pace, actually. Our stress test was last October and November. Um, we found the spring sales to be extremely strong, especially in Hong Kong. Last spring? Uh, this, this spring? This spring. That was surprising? Uh, it was, given that we weren't sure whether people would yet be focused on buying works of art, objects of enjoyment, and they've turned their attention Sorry. towards that again. Leading indicator? You know, we focused on so many economic indicators. Was that a leading indicator to you to say, you know what, maybe things were bottoming out? I've begun to hear that more and more from our clients who are in the financial business, manufacturing business, import-export business, petroleum business, that they're ready to start thinking about consumption. They know what their other assets are worth, and they can start focusing on their works of art. Well, that's an interesting point. point, point. So they're not feeling, in terms of the wealth effect, they're not feeling, I guess, as poor or less wealthy, and so they feel comfortable enough to spend. Is that kind of the conclusion? Our sense is that while they may feel somewhat less wealthy, they know where they stand. And that's what they didn't know in the autumn. All right, so that was over in Asia. I'm just curious about what you're seeing in terms of activity here in the U.S. It's almost precisely the same thing. The, mm. the United States sales for Impressionist and Modern Pictures, post-war and contemporary art, jewelry, old master pictures have all had sell-through rates, the percentage of objects sold, um, as high as they were in our boom years. It's the overall price levels which have decreased somewhat, but we're still seeing record prices for masterpieces. So our business is actually on a pretty even keel right now. That's interesting. So how would you describe them, the art market right now? Uh, extremely strong in terms of demand, still tentative in terms of people's willingness to consign works of art uh, because they haven't been sure where the market is. But we're starting to see an uptick in that as well. And the autumn sales should be pretty good. What, what, you know, you talk about increased demand, and I'm just curious, like you said, the old masters, is it, that's where you're seeing the most significant moves here and kind of the market kind of holding its own? Uh, we're actually seeing significant demand in almost every category, uh, while... But the most, is it in kind of... Uh, the most is in Impressionist and Modern Paintings okay. and Jewelry and Traditional Stores of Value. All right. What about, though, as you mentioned, you know, consignment, people are kind of holding off. Um, but for collectors, I mean, is it a good time for them to sell? It's actually a very good time for them to sell, uh, in part because there's so little on the market that we're seeing terrific prices for the best things. Our volume is really driven, our dollar volume is really driven by record prices for extremely rare things. You know what, I wanted to ask you too, because the financial firms have such incredible collections of, arts, and, of art, and I'm just curious, did they sell some of it? I'm, I'm throwing this out at you, you know, but I'm just, you know, we were wondering, you know, as the financial firms went through their crisis, they had to be looking at all their assets, and we know that they hold a lot. And I'm just curious if you saw activity flow coming from the financial firms to you guys saying, we have some work to sell. We have seen some corporate collections sold, but for the most part, corporations uh, moved out of art collecting over the last decade. So the great corporate collections, which were Reader's Digest, IBM, Phoenix Insurance were largely sold. What we have seen in the past season, though, is executives at financial firms selling, and that's something that's definitely been an important part of our business. How much? Can you quantify it at all? I mean, has it been like you've never seen it before? It, it, no, but the financial world has always been an important part of the yeah. art market, and they're active buyers and sellers. All right, interesting. Auction houses themselves, like yourself, I mean, you guys are doing okay. You're kind of weathering through. Yeah, we did pretty well last year. We made a good profit, and we're on, online to make a profit this year as well. All right. So, outlook at this point? Uh, optimistic, more than cautiously optimistic. Very optimistic if the property comes in. One thing I do want to get to is that you guys were also phasing out the practice of guaranteeing a seller a minimum, regardless of a sales outcome, to really improve profitability. Necessary move or...? Well, while the market was so volatile, it was extremely risky to assure some sort of downside price. Right. You had to uh, protect yourself here. We, we did have to protect ourselves. We are doing them occasionally, but when we do them, we sell off that risk to third parties uh, who choose to take that market risk. All right. Good to know. All right. 
we're going to leave it there. We covered a lot of ground. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mark Porter, everybody, joining us today from uh, Christie's. He's the Christie's America's president.